In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is an old story about a woman who arrived late for a wedding one Saturday afternoon. She was frustrated and harried, adjusting her dress and smoothing out her hair as she raced up the stairs to the church. As she arrived at the door, an usher asked her for her invitation. I don't have one, she snapped. Well, said the usher, are you a friend of the groom? Certainly not, the woman replied. I'm the mother of the bride. <laughs> Our gospel lesson from Matthew for this morning is an interesting and somewhat disturbing parable. It too involves a wedding invitation and the surprising responses of the invited guests. What are we to make of it? How are we to incorporate this lesson into our own lives and in our own journey of faith? The first thing to remember is that while this is one of Jesus' parables, it is being told by Matthew years after Jesus' death. As a result, it not only reflects Jesus' teaching, but it also reflects Matthew's experience as a Christian in the first century. Second, I think this lesson can best be understood more as an allegory than as a classic parable. In this sense, the king who gives the banquet can be understood as God. The banquet is the kingdom of God, described by our described by Isaiah in our first lesson this morning as a great feast where death is swallowed up and God wipes away all human tears. The invited guests are the people of Israel. The slaves sent out to call the guests are the great prophets of Israel's history who were rejected over and over and over again. The slave who was killed is a foreshadowing of Jesus' own crucifixion. And the destruction of the guests who reject the invitation and the burning of their city is most likely Matthew's interpretation of recent events of his own day when the city of Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans in A.D. 70 some 30 years after Jesus' crucifixion. In the end, though, the new guest list, there is a new guest list for this great feast of the kingdom of God, and it now includes everyone, both the good and the bad, as Matthew says. This parable was intended as a slap at the religious authorities of Jesus' day who thought that only the religiously observant and the ritually pure could be included in God's kingdom. It is also a reminder to all of us to remember that we too are called to respond to God's invitation to come and be a part of the kingdom. But for my purposes this morning, I want to focus on the last part of this lesson. The guest who responds to the king's invitation and comes to the wedding banquet, but who is thrown out because he doesn't have the right clothing. What is that about? What's going on there? In the New Testament, Putting on new clothing is often used as a metaphor for spiritual change, spiritual growth, spiritual maturing. Paul uses this metaphor repeatedly. In his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul says, the perishable body must put on imperishability, and the mortal body must put on immortality. In his letter to the Colossians, he writes even more directly 
as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. In this sense, responding to God's invitation to come to the great feast, the great banquet, to be a part of the kingdom is not enough. We have to do more than just show up. We have to be willing to let go of our old life and to clothe ourselves in God's life. We have to respond to God's invitation by wrapping ourselves and our lives in kindness and compassion and humility and meekness and patience and love. Woody Allen once famously said that 80% of life is just showing up. Jesus wants us to know that being a part of God's great work requires more than just showing up. It requires a willingness on our part to grow and to change and to become the people God intended us to be. It requires letting go of our old garments so that we can put on God's. As G.K. Chesterton used to say, just going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than standing in your garage makes you a car. My friends, this is one of the great paradoxes of our faith. Yes, everyone is invited into God's banquet. Everyone is invited to be a part of the kingdom. Everyone is included. No one is excluded from God's table. As a symbol of that, every Sunday before we celebrate the Eucharist, we always make sure that people know that they are invited to come to God's table and to share in God's meal, regardless of who they are and where they come from. Everyone is invited to take part in the body and blood of Christ. But at the same time, for those of us who choose to stay at the table, It is not enough for us to just be here. Showing up is not enough. We have to be willing to take part in God's work. We have to be willing to go from this place, from the table, and take Christ with us into the world, in our lives. We remind ourselves of this in the closing prayer for the service when we say, now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. I'm reminded of the Roman Catholic Cardinal Paul Ledger. In 1950, Ledger was consecrated the Archbishop of Montreal. He was a man of deep love and great compassion, and he was so successful in his ministry in Montreal that in 1953, he was made a cardinal, a prince of the church, one of the youngest in modern history. Ledger was considered one of the most influential Catholic prelates of the 20th century. In 1963, while taking part in the Second Vatican Council, Cardinal Ledger toured African leper colonies. Shaken by what he saw, he started raising money to care for the lepers. Then five years later, in 1968, Ledger stunned his diocese and the wider church by announcing that he was resigning as the Archbishop of Montreal and as a Cardinal to go to Africa and to work among the lepers and the impoverished children there. He settled in Cameroon where he founded an institute for lepers 
and a center for the rehabilitation of the handicapped. And for more than 12 years, he lived in a construction trailer next to the hospital, caring day in and day out for the sickest and for the least of these. Cardinal Ledger knew that he had been invited to God's banquet. He knew that he had received an invitation, but what he came to understand was that for him to adequately respond to that invitation, it wasn't enough to wear the robes of the church. Rather, he had to take those off so that he could more fully become a humble servant of God. My friends, this afternoon and tomorrow night, as Dana mentioned in her announcements, we will gather together to have important and difficult conversations. Events in our nation, including the tragedy of Charlottesville and the recent removal of the Lee Jackson windows in the cathedral, have highlighted the fact that there is still a racial divide in this country of ours. As followers of Christ, we are called to respect the dignity of every human being. And part of what that means is to honor God's invitation to come to the great banquet is to take the risk to speak honestly and listen deeply to one another. No matter our cultural heritage or ethnic background, we have a story to tell and a truth that needs to be heard. It isn't enough to just show up here on Sunday morning and say we love our neighbors as ourselves. We have to put that love into action. In this case, with these conversations, that means being willing to listen deeply and speak truthfully so that we can more fully honor and understand one another. This is hard work, but this is also what St. Paul means when he says that we are to clothe ourselves with love. If you've already signed up for one of these conversations this afternoon or tomorrow night, thank you for your willingness to share in this work. If you have not yet signed up, I hope you will. We need your voice and your insight. In conclusion, my brothers and sisters, the table is set, the invitations have gone out, and each one of us has been invited to God's great feast. If we accept this free invitation, then let us also be willing to be clothed anew. Let us be willing to take off our pride and our ego and our self-centered preoccupations and put on the identity that God has prepared for us. Because it isn't enough to just admire Jesus. We must desire to be like Jesus. We must desire to be changed so that Jesus' willingness to forgive others becomes our willingness to forgive. So that Jesus' compassion for others becomes our compassion so that Jesus' love for the least and lost becomes our love. As one of my favorite prayers in the prayer book says, Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to Thee, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly Thine utterly dedicated unto thee. And then use us, we pray thee, as thou wilt, and always to thy glory and the welfare of thy people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.